thank you for having me. Well, I love this section because it's action zone. And to be honest, well, I'm very action oriented. I actually get in trouble because I'm very action oriented. But this trouble has led to very interesting things and I would love to share you what has been happening. So uh, five years ago, I was recruited in a project called 2050 Life Investments. And they were aligned to the 2050 uh, agenda, to the Millennium Agenda, which is previous to the SDGs. And they were looking for out of the box thinking, uh, action oriented, um, innovators, let's say, that can uh, empower philanthropy, promote philanthropy, and uh, start to take action from another angle. And little by little, I became kind of the proof of concept of this initiative. And this is something that we have been doing uh, for the last five years. So first we took one technology was um, big data and we start to map everything that has to do with oceans. And of course, we got really fast on track and suddenly, you know, we have a message to share. So we began with um, virtual reality. Virtual reality has a tremendous capacity to lead people from curiosity to interest, from interest to desire, and from desire to action. And what is the action, of course, restore the coral. And we took it to places where there was no access to this technology. So rural, Mayan uh, schools that even if they live in the Mexican Caribbean, they don't know uh, that what is going on on the water. And what is going on on the water is that we are facing the biggest loss of uh, natural capital, primary production for the uh, underwater fauna, and of course the ecosystemal services. And now with all of these new phenomena, this thing is going even worse. So virtual reality gives us a great opportunity to take people in this virtual dive and suddenly have someone understanding better uh, what it was going on. So the kids were amazing. Actually, they are the ones who lead us to the real core of, of, our, or, of our mission. But we also pl place it with people who are very high end. And this lead to a very interesting community that suddenly we were on the Congress of Mexico presenting initiatives and also introducing possibilities to have uh, election commitments translated into environmental actions, like this action called One Vote, One Coral. So for the state of Quintana Roo, the governor, the elected governor, actually commit for each vote that he got one coral colony. That's 6,240,000 coral units within his period of, of governance. It sounds beautiful, but you know, politics sometimes, it takes a little bit of encouragement from the civic society to, to actually fulfill the commitment. Nevertheless, they have started these last two years with the project, and there is the intention of plant, they have already planted like 3.1 thousand uh, corals units. So they're a little bit left behind, but unfortunately the situation in the water is worse, and I don't think that it will really generate an effect. But anyway, we did that. And then a point of agreement on the Senate of the Republic in which civic society participation and the implementation of global emerging technology can lead to a, a, a strength the environmental agenda. We pass that on it. And then in the federal elections, we also, you know, it was right on Ocean's Day, it was June, and we present a whole bunch of initiatives that they are based on the best practice of the SDG 14 and the decade of science of UNESCO, and the government took it and published it. So now the federal agenda is committed to most of the commitments that, that, we, that we present. So that was awesome, but we need to do more. So we also did murals from the Pacific to the Caribbean. We have over 76 murals and with an open invitation to anybody who wants to participate and especially placing these corals where people don't know what is the ocean because if the Mexican people doesn't know the natural heritage that they have and what, how valuable it is, they will never stand for it. So we did that as well, a lot of festivals, high level events, all of this, and then we start to get, you know, I mean, in parallel, let's say, we got on the water. So what you see on the right side is this program that, that is due to the, commit the election commitment uh, that we got is the um, INAPESCA, is the Mexican Institute of Fishery. So they have, uh, they're, they're doing microfragmentation, which is one of the latest, uh, uh, technologies for propagation of coral, but we also create a, a, a resilience or no, restoration experience. So we take people on the water to work in a farm underwater, and it's not that much of the coral that we can actually plant, it's more about having people to engage in this agenda. 
and more than 350 people has done it. They all love the project. We know is the bomb. Unfortunately, all that coral has died due to the bacteria called the white syndrome. But these together, I mean, we got them like, um, it was a little money, but like uh, $1 million to the in Mex Mexican Institute of Fishery for their project. And this one is already ongoing and working. And we have everything to escalate it to all the island or whatever. We have a plug and play ready to go solution in a container so everybody can be planting coral in their own corner of the planet. So. I was talking about the white syndrome because this is the most important topic that I have to address today, okay? We saw the 2040 scenario, the 20 some scenario, and we said like, okay, well, we have this time to, to work on it, but it didn't happen. Everything moved forward, okay? And this bacteria is a white stony tissue, I think they call it in, in Florida, and they're working to, to do exactly the same that we are, we are doing in Mexico, but with a $160 million uh, budget. And there's also all around the Caribbean, this bacteria. But what happened is that this crisis allowed me to bring together all the infrastructure of Mexico, which is the labs of the CCS, that's the subsystem of aquatic generic resources. So they have the technology of cryogenization, coral genomics. This idea came out after meeting the, the founder of the Human Genome Project. Then the Mexican Autonomous University, who specialize on assisted sexual reproduction, so you preserve the genetic diversity of, of the coral. And the INAPESCA, the, which is the academic arm of the Mexican Institute of Fishery, and this is um, basically microfragmentation. Together, we're doing the Ark of Noah. What I mean with the Ark of Noah is basically we want to guarantee that the next generation is going to have the prime source of genetic material to grow the coral inland and repopulate it. This is an, an, an ongoing project. I'm not talking about like I'm waiting for the rest of the world to support me because I know everybody's dealing with a lot. And there is not such a thing as one ocean community striving to help us all together to save what we can on our own regions. We are pre-alone, I mean, I understand and respect it, and I'm not gonna complain about it, I'm just gonna remark the obvious. We are not taking action on time. We saw the 2030, 2040 scenario arriving on 2020. This is happening today. The coral is just dying hard. Next year will be expected that 90% is gonna be out. So we put this effort together and I'm raising uh, as much support as is possible. This is my mission right now. The project's objectives are, you know, secure uh, Ark of Noah, a genetic bank, you know, it's kind of biblic. And I know that we need to work on the water quality and I know I need to know I, I know that we need to work with a lot of other things and it's gonna be very complicated, but with this, at least we can give a little advantage and we have an horizon to beat the time frame, okay? So, um, Restore Coral start as a movement, then it became an NGO, and then it became a company. Now I don't know what is gonna happen, but we are just citizens trying to do our best and we rely on the support of others who are specialized in public policy and business and all of that to support us because we cannot do everything. But I think this is the most important thing that we can be doing on the water because the, the situation is there. Category five hurricanes, bacteria, pathogens all over. They're gonna be spread out like crazy in this uh, next year. The, um, of course, the, um, uh, the, the temperature that is rising. So let's try to give the next generation an advantage and have something for them, you know, to preserve, to, to work for. And now that you are all informed, I make you also responsible. So thank you very much for your attention.